poppin' guys? Boy, Jay Reed's knocking. Sorry, I've been away. Uh, I just moved to New Jersey, got a digital marketing job at a startup. So new thing, super dope, looking for a place. It's extremely busy, but I definitely didn't want to leave you guys hanging. So today I'm going to drop some gems and talk about my top five struggles as a music producer and how I deal with them, really overcome them on a regular basis. If you're new to the channel, make sure you go ahead and knock that subscribe button and notification bell because it helps a tiny creator such as myself grow and it ensures you're gonna get notified every time I drop a new one of these videos. So the first struggle, this one is definitely uh, not out of the ordinary. Everyone deals with this. It's uh, staying inspired and avoiding beat block. The biggest thing for me, when I notice that I am getting beat block, it's usually because I've been sitting at a computer for far too long. I might not be eating enough. I just don't have inspiration, right? I don't have creative juices rolling in my body so a lot of the times what I'll do is take a break whether that be for the rest of the day or for a couple hours and go exercise or go like hang out with a friend or go to the gym or something also what helps with inspiration is sometimes I'm like too schedule oriented and I just have to say screw the schedule I do this on Sunday sometimes I just say screw the schedule and just wake up and do whatever I want to do so if I feel like making music immediately at 9 a.m. in the morning I'm just gonna do it regardless if I've eaten or not you know another way to stay inspired and avoid beat block is collaborating with other music producers as well as asking for feedback from tons of people not just music producers not just musicians like learning from people who don't even are are not even music producers and musicians is, is also a super gem that not a lot of people talk about because they're gonna pick up from potential issues in your beats or your songs that you probably wouldn't even know and they're just listening from a consumer standpoint so another go great way to avoid beat block is by learning an instrument. I took piano lessons for a year and a half and then COVID happened and carpal tunnel happened. So wasn't really doing that much after that, but now I've been playing more piano again and I'm getting ready to get another teacher again soon. And even while I was like super down and couldn't play any piano, I started learning music theory. So I've been learning music theory for nearly a year now and that really helps. Second big struggle of mine, about a year ago, uh, last October, I started developing carpal tunnel syndrome really bad in my right hand and I had it some in my left hand. And specifically for the first like three to five months, I wanna say three months, it was insanely terrible. I couldn't even consider touching the piano and trying to play a triad or like really even touching the piano for a couple minutes without getting crazy nerve spikes and I could barely work and I was just super unmotivated and super down for months. You, you don't want to have that bro. Like I was waking up for months where my hands would be numb. I was just like, I was pretty, it's probably the most depressed I've ever been in my whole life. And I'm not even a depressed person. So I went to physical therapy for five and a half months, finished that. I did some regenerative shots, which are not cortisone, but they are, do seem to help a lot uh, months, months, months later. And I still do physical therapy exercises like nerve glides and stretches and exercise every day. This struggle is not just about me too, right? I'm saying carpal tunnel syndrome, but some people have other physical limitations and pains from sitting in a chair and using the computer and typing and using the mouse all day yeah man so if you're having physical pains and limitations really really good things you can do is stretch every single day exercise on a regular basis eat healthy drink a lot of water take breaks and a good way to incorporate taking breaks in your music production is using a break notification like timer thing as well as a, a ergonomic so i prefer a vertical mouse twenty dollars on amazon this is more expensive it's like a hundred dollars for this ergonomic keyboard and right now, um, I always use like a monitor stand to prop up my laptop. So like my my uh, sort of shoulder blades and neck is not like this when I'm working because all this type of stuff, it may not seem serious, you know, right now. And also using a really good computer chair, that's clutch. But yeah, man, ergonomics and, and really addressing your physical problems and pains while producing is important because I feel like a lot of people don't take that seriously and it can progress into serious problems. All right, number three, sending out beats and samples. I'll be honest, I still kind of suck at this, but I'm getting a lot better. Number one way I've learned to overcome this is by literally writing to my calendar uh, and scheduling, I'm gonna send out beats and samples to so-and-so today, or I'm gonna do this on Sunday, send out beats and samples. So actually putting in your schedule that you're gonna send out beats and samples, and another way to do this is make the task even more formal to you know eliminate any room for error by creating email lists, 
process using Excel or Google Sheets, which is free, to you know compile a list of all your favorite artists or make it a producer, a loop email list of all your favorite producers, making lists and then you know sticking to a schedule. Maybe you send out beats once a week, maybe you send out samples once a week. But scheduling is definitely, definitely um, something that's helped me a lot. I think it could help you guys too. And then another another way is just being self-aware and understanding that if I have a whole bunch of beats, like I'm really good at making beats and I'm really good at making samples and they're just sitting on my hard drive, I'm shooting myself and my business and, and I'm just shooting myself in the foot. It's, it's I'm, I'm missing tons of opportunities. Numero uno, dos, tres, uno, dos, tres, cinco. Yes, that, that's correct. I'm making music every day for a little bit as opposed to being super all or nothing. My personality is like all or nothing, so it's great when I'm hustling or when I'm working and doing this or that. It sucks when I'm down because then I'm like super down. But the point is, think back to if you played uh, sports in high school or if you're in college right now or you are in high school right now and you are playing sports, your, your coach will, or if you play instruments right now, your, your coach or your teacher, your instructor will always say it's better to practice a little every day as opposed to just waiting and practicing once a week for like four hours or eight hours. And I'm pretty sure there are studies that your your brain like retains and learns a lot better from practicing a little every day as, a pro, as opposed to overworking yourself and doing it all in one day. And coming back to that last tip where I was talking about sending out beats and samples, scheduling and you know writing in your schedule that I'm gonna practice piano for 30 minutes or I'm gonna just, I'm gonna make two beats today or I'm gonna upload a beat. Something to do with your music and your business, writing that in your schedule was a great way to start incorporating it uh, you know in your life on a daily basis as opposed to just waiting on the weekend and making music and working on your business for like 10 hours two days in a row number six yep additional gem had to throw it in here the icing on the cake allowing yourself to have a life and relaxing and giving yourself downtime let me start off with the funniest reason the selfish intention reason that let's be honest if you don't allow yourself to have downtime and have a life your music is eventually gonna start to suck. And I don't care how much you like making music, you're eventually gonna have beat block. And on top of that, your stuff is gonna sound probably bad. Quality control is gonna degrade over time because it's like, what inspiration do you have? You don't have inspiration because all you do is sit behind a computer or an instrument and sit in a studio all day, every day. Not putting your, so much pressure on yourself and understanding that like, dude, spending time with your family, having friends, getting a girlfriend, exercising, doing whatever you like to do for fun, having other hobbies, like these are not negative things. You don't have to be a stereotypical producer character that Instagram's painted it out to be as if you're not grinding 24 seven, if you're not posting tight beats every day, if you're not trying to get placements, sending out 400 samples a day, you're whack, you're wasting your life. Like, nah, bro, that's, that's propaganda, that's marketing, that's just people making content that's pretty shitty in my opinion. So understanding that like having, having friends, family, all that stuff is important, bro. You only live one life. So balancing out that stuff is not only good for you and important, but it's also gonna make your music better. So one way that it works for me is instead of leaving room for me to decide if I wanna do something for fun or hang out with someone, like I'll literally schedule working out or schedule like doing something with a friend, scheduling having a life as opposed to just leaving it up to fate can definitely help you, you know, force you get out of the studio when you need to to get out of the studio. Filming this on my iPhone, I'm inside my hotel room. Uh, hopefully I can find a place soon. I looked at some apartments in East Philly the other day. So if I, I'm, I'm really hoping to get a super dope place in the city um, where the studio setup would be unreal and the videos and content excuse me, it would be super dope. Anyways, thank you so much. I appreciate all you guys for watching the video and making it this far. Different type of video, but it really is super helpful stuff. So if you, you wanna share this with a friend because you thought it was dope, feel free to, that would be awesome. And as always, leave a thumbs up if you thought this was dope. Leave a comment what you think below. If you haven't already, make sure to go and knock that subscribe button and notification bell. So anytime I drop a dope video like this, you're notified, I wouldn't want you to miss out. And I'm working on a piano sample pack that should be out really soon with samples from me, like playing the piano, legit mic'd up, called Key Sick, dopest piano sample pack ever. It's gonna be out soon. Peace, hope y'all have a good one.